House kicked off immigration hearings today, and at issue was the 11 million undocumented immigrants who are residing in the U.S. Republicans, of course, who lost big with Latinos in November, know that they've got to pass some reform to make them look more inclusive. But Judiciary Committee Chairman Bob Goodlatte didn't sound like he was in any kind of rush. I think we can all agree that our nation's immigration system is in desperate need of repair, and it is not working as efficiently and fairly as it should be. The American people and members of Congress have a lot of questions about how our legal immigration system should work. They have a lot of questions about why our immigration laws have not always been sufficiently enforced. Well, Democrats like our next guest, Illinois Congressman Luis Gutierrez, are pushing for a swift path to citizenship and a swift resolution of this issue. Congressman Gutierrez is coming to us tonight from Washington. Welcome inside the war room, Congressman. <laughs> Good to be with you, Jennifer. Thank you for Great. having me. Yeah, you bet. Glad to have you here. So your uh, colleague, House Majority Leader Eric Cantor, actually was speaking at the conservative American Enterprise Institute today. And he softened his stand on immigration when it comes at least to children. This is what he said. He said, it is time to provide an opportunity for legal re residence and citizenship for those who were brought to this country as children and who know no other home. Now, do you think that um, many Republicans are actually saying they're open to immigration reform, but maybe in reality they are not? Here's what I think. I think that we had a Republican Party that a few short months ago ran a presidential campaign on a platform that said, it was adopted in Tampa, that said SB 1070 in Arizona, the anti-immigrant law in Arizona, should be the model used in all 49 mm -hmm. states. It also said in their platform that the way you deal with undocumented workers in this country is that they just all should self-deport. That is, go home, make your bags, and leave. Leave them behind their businesses, their children, and the decades that they've been here, many of them. So that was kind of, but what's really curious is, of course, that Romney said he'd veto the DREAM Act right. if he were president of the United States. And so today I, I thanked uh, Eric Cantor, and I'm yeah. happy to hear Eric Cantor because what he said was, I will support a pathway to citizenship for young immigrants. That's a step in the right direction. Let's remember that the majority leader, who's an influential member of his caucus and of his party, uh, voted against the DREAM Act the last time it was before the House of Representatives and now wants to adopt it. I think that's a step. You know what? Every now and then there are elections and we all respect the results of those elections and do the people's work that they sent us here to do. Well, I mean, you are so great. That's such a positive way of looking at it. A, a cynical person <laughs> might say, hmm, there are 11 million undocumented immigrants, and if they get a path to citizenship, that might mean 11 million people who read the Republican platform last time and who might end up voting Democratic. So really, are they going sure. to make the changes that they now seem to say they want to make? Yes, I got it. Good. So here's what happened. The American people voted for immigration reform pretty clearly, right, and resoundingly in Colorado, uh, you know, Nevada, New Mexico, Florida. They voted for it, right? Okay. And Democrats really want it. And I think you're right. Republicans really need it. So I think that's probably a good equation for getting it done, uh, number one. But number, number two, look, uh, the fact is 500,000 Latinos turn 18 every year, and that number is only going to increase, 500,000. Mm -hmm. And yes, for all your viewers, they're all citizens of the United States turning 18. You already saw the electoral map and the swift changes that are being made given this new demographic change. Look, they have to respond. In four years, there's going to be over 2 million more Latinos eligible to be registered to vote across this country and millions of others who can adopt American citizenship um, without anything else done to our immigration system. So, look, I think the Republican Party, you know who said it best? Let's give him credit. John McCain. He was my partner in 2005. I and Congressman Flake, now Senator Flake, introduced it in the House and Senator Kennedy mm -hmm. and he introduced comprehensive immigration reform. You saw what he said last week, yeah. Jennifer. They said, why are you doing it? He said, politics. Exactly. You know what? But I don't, I, yeah, it's one word. Politics. But you know what? 
What did that really mean? Let's extrapolate just a little bit. In other words, those people won't vote for us if we don't do this. And I right. want to have the ability to talk to them and garner their vote. And so, so a community spoke. And now politicians are changing. I, I think it's refreshing sometimes in Washington, D.C. to hear people simply tell the truth. I am so, I'm so happy to hear you say that. I, 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 I just question their authenticity and the rationale. But, hey, even if their motivation is just to win elections and not that something that they truly believe in, at least it might create some policy unless the sure. Tea Party or those on the far right drag yes. them and say those 11 million are never going to vote for us so we better not do this. But hey, there was a, actually a group of uh, pro-immigration activists who I think disrupted today's hearing just before yes. um, Congressman Daryl Issa spoke. Listen to this. Yes. The committee will have order it's a little bit hard for us to hear. What exactly were they looking for? Sure. It, here, it, it's a group of youth, um, undocumented youth, um, who say they're unafraid and they're coming out and letting everybody know that it's time uh, to give them a pathway to leg legalization. They're also uh, very involved in expanding the immigration issue uh, to make sure that our brothers and sisters in the LGBT community are also included uh, when we transform our system. I, for one, believe that Soraida and I, who have been married 35 years, that our marriage and the marriage of same-sex couples that are binational should be given the same treatment. There should be no differentiation. That love and that tenderness that they have for one another and that wanting to build up a family, we should respect that family unit. And so... Uh, today, uh, Congressman Nadler, I, and a group of others reintroduced UAFA, which would grant not, we would not recognize in our immigration uh, law marriage, but we would recognize the right of an American citizen to fall in love with someone from another country of the same sex and be able to apply for a visa and bring them to live happily and content here in this country, just as I or you as American citizen would have the same opportunity. I just love talking to you. All right, one last question, because you, you, you just make me proud to be a Democrat. How, how much of um, President Obama's leverage do you think that he's going to use or that he will need to use to actually get this reform passed? Is there enough momentum on the Republican side of the aisle that you actually believe this is going to happen quite, pretty yeah. quickly? I think, yeah, I think that's the most important thing. Look. Nothing happens in Washington, D.C. without a demand outside of Washington, D.C. There is no one who can, has a better position in our political structure than the President of the United States. And I believe that's what Barack Obama is going to do. That's what our President is going to go from here to there and everywhere in this country. Keep insisting that the Congress act. The people have voted. They reelected him by 5 million votes. He's going to use that bully pulpit. What a great place for him to use it. Keep the pressure on the Congress of the United States. Nothing's going to happen unless we're persistent and insistent in the Congress Act. And he's the one that can keep that up for us. All right. Representative Luis Gutierrez, I'm so proud that you came inside the war and gave us the perspective from what happened in D.C. on the ground today. And up next, we switch to another big issue from D.C. It needs to get tackled on the Hill. It is the budget. California Congresswoman Karen Bass is going to join us to talk about that right after the quick break.